If I showed you a picture of Uncle Sam and asked you to name the country that he represented, I would think the vast majority of us would say the United States. Maybe if I showed you a picture of a maple leaf, you would know that it represented our neighbors to the north, Canada. But what if I showed you a picture of a grapevine? Would you even have a clue as to what country that represented? It really was ancient Israel. And if you look at a few references in the Old Testament, you'll see why that is so. Psalm 85, for example, reads, O Lord of hosts, a vine from Egypt you transplanted. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. Or the fifth chapter of Isaiah. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are, Judah are his cherished plant. And so the grapevine became a symbol of ancient Israel. But over the course of the years, the, the vine, in a sense, turned bad because the people had turned away from the covenant with the Lord. That's why Isaiah proclaimed later, why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Or in Jeremiah, I had planted you a choice vine. How could you turn out obnoxious, a false vine. So it's against that background that we hear Jesus proclaiming in the gospel this morning, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. Remain in me as I remain in you. And if you do, you will bear much fruit. Two points for reflection today. The first is to see that phrase, remain in me, as I remain in you, as a prayer that Jesus utters not only for his disciples 2,000 years ago, but for you and me this morning. Remain in me, or sometimes translated, abide in me. We need to appreciate the strong desire that God has to be one with us that there is a, a desire on his part to be united with us. And we need to understand that we can only sustain ourselves if we are united with the Lord. We can't be self-sustaining. As the gospel says, if the branch is separate, becomes separate from the vine, it'll wither and die. We need to seek God's help on a regular basis. The second point of the reflection is to imagine yourself being part of this vine, but understand that sometimes we need pruning, we need correction, we need certain things cut away from us, bad habits or poor choices. We need to change, and the first step to change is always to admit that we have a need to change. I guess like many of you, I know that there are more years behind me than ahead of me, unless I live to 112 or so. <laughs> but what I need to avoid is that temptation to say, I'm too old to change. Now, haven't you heard people say that over and over again? We need to avoid that temptation because it's really an excuse for inaction. It's an excuse to deny the need for pruning, for change, for greater unity with the Lord. And this applies not simply to seniors, but to anyone who can understand the words that I'm saying today. We need to be honest with ourselves and admit the need to change and then ask the Lord for the grace the strength to affect the change. God truly wants to remain one with, wants us to remain one with him. That's a great gift. It's a great grace. 
He is the vine, and we are the branches. 